Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is the Two Old Farts. My name is Chuck. <laughs> what a fucking day. Excuse my French. I'm doing good, though. This is the better looking of the Two Old Farts now that we got this shit out of the way, right? We spent 25 minutes troubleshooting. I'm telling you, technology will be the death of this podcast. That's what we should maybe call this, not the Two Old Farts. Technology will be the death of us. Yep. Last time we talked about pet peeves, I got another one here today. We're going to talk about annoyances. Okay. The top of this list is going to be this. Oh, Uh, my goodness. While we were talking, doing all that stuff, and my mind was clicking, I need to go get a damn new computer. How long have you had it? Huh? How long have you had it? About three years. Yeah, you might have another year left in it. Use them for a look at, like today, I, I did some research on thinking about some things to talk about, right? Since we already talked about pet peeves, I thought I would talk about annoyances, things that annoy you, you know, that, that are actually pet peeves, but they just a little bit different, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, ever since we have started this podcast, and this is year three, we have not had a period that went beyond, I don't know, six, eight weeks where we didn't have a recurring pop-up of technological problems. Yeah, and that's like, but well, my hearing age adjusted, she got me the thing from Mike. That when, uh, the other day, I plugged it in. I was listening to a podcast, our podcast. Everything was coming out straight into my ear. Now, I, I grew up, I wasn't talking. It's all about the microphone, but that's the microphone and everything built into this. When you turn it on, when your mom and I are watching TV, I'll use this because it picks up the TV. Then when she talks, it picks it up and it goes straight into my to my hearing aid. So it makes it easier for us to talk while we're watching the movie or show or whatever we're doing. I don't know. It's just it's annoying, right? It's a pain in the butt. It it can be challenging, and mo- challenging in the most part because I'm not there to help you through the problem, so I can't see what you see on your screen, you know? That's why I was, like, texting you or calling you on the phone, and then some way, somehow, I had decided we could maybe try to record this in Google Meets, record it, download it, and then try to do it that way, and some and when we... S- Got Google Meets going. I still couldn't hear you. What did you do after I said I couldn't hear you? I just kept muting the mic, unmuted. I went back in and turned shit off. I don't know. But you, that's how you got it working. And I'm like, okay, mute, mute the microphone on Google Meets, and we'll go back and open up Riverside. And I was for sure that you were going to get lost and maybe mute the microphone on the laptop, not on the Google Meets. But I did both. I muted. That's what I thought. Because I then I couldn't hear you on this, and I'm like, not the microphone on your laptop in the meets. And I think that's when you got it. This, none of my deaf and dumb. Well, I'm technologically dumb too. I'm right there behind you. Uh, Talk about getting dumb. This past week, last weekend, I I was working on some homework for my um, data analytics class, and. There were two questions, and each question had five parts, an A, B, C, D, A, B, C, E, and F. For some reason, on the homework, I only answered A, B, and C for one and two. I don't know why I did not see or do D, E, or F. So I turned the homework in, but I had changed the format it was in, it was done in Excel, and then I saved it to a PDF file. And the professor emails me back, and he says, "Hey, I think your uh, Excel got truncated in PDF." And he's like, "Cause I'm not seeing one D, one E, one F, and two D, two E, two F." So I go back and look at my homework, and I look, and I, then I go back to the assignment. And sure as shit, I didn't do D, E, or F for either one. So I, I reply back, hang on. It took me like 10 or 15 minutes to finish it off, send it up. So then I sent him week two's homework a few days later, and he emails me back almost immediately saying, hey, I didn't get the, did you do the, uh, you know, uh, the second page of the homework? And I'm like, what? 
go back. And sure as shit, I didn't do the second page of the homework. There was only one question that I just, I must have just skipped right over. I don't, this is two weeks of homework that I have completely missed something. So don't feel bad about being technologically challenged because right now I am homework challenged in my data analytics class. Well, there's so much stuff going on and doing things and you can get, yeah, that's just, Every Saturday, I got certain routines, you know, so we, went, we got our football games, and you had a concert yesterday. I thought you was going to call me. I was waiting for a text message, but then later on, I saw that you had a, had a concert, so I figured that's where you was at. But anyway, I got a routine. We get pizza. Your mom and I have already decided that we're going to get pizza, and usually get Papa John's, and they did pretty good. I order from the same place on my laptop every freaking week. Same location, okay? So yesterday, I ordered. I drive over to Tesla, which is probably about two or three miles, right? Young girl, she's really nice. And I said, pick up for Lou. She said, who? I said, Lou, hello, you. Then I said, well, maybe it's under you listeners. I spelled my name, and she can't find it. So uh, finally, I pulled up, and I had just deleted the email where I got the, you know, the confirmation that it was made and all that kind of stuff. So I went into my credit card and I found the receipt that says store number 4626. She said, it's an element of My God. How the heck did that happen? I have no idea. So she was real nice and she was, I could tell she knew because she had no idea where the hell element Heights was. Yeah, you know, she said, it's on Caledonia. I said, okay, I know it's outside the loop, but yeah, you know, it you know, because Alamo Ranch is pretty big. No. Nope. So we're talking. So anyway. Now, did you say Alamo Heights or Alamo Ranch? Alamo Ranch. I'm okay. Well, we said Alamo Heights, but Alamo Ranch. You did. So anyway, I said, I'll look it up on my maps in my car when I drive over. I tipped her fine off because she was so nice. And I was pretty frustrated, you know, because I got so much time for, for us to eat. Ball game, come on, and I get ready for that ball game. And. Then I said to myself, well, I hope my damn ball game don't turn out like my trip for my pizza and bigger than life. It, it started out that way. I said, oh, man. So anyway, I finally got over there and got it, and we got home. So it's, this technological yeah. stuff is it's not for me. Yeah, I had to leave about an hour into the game. Actually, about 40 minutes into the game because the game didn't start till 10 till 3. Right. So I had to be there by 4.15 for the meet and greet. So I got there just a little bit before 4. Um, met the band, did the photo. They signed uh, my album and my and my uh, um, access VIP pass or whatever. You know, got to talk to the band a little bit and then and then, you know, they shoo you out because it's only like 5 o'clock and the doors open at 6. So it was about 10 till 5, 15 till 5. And I just decided to go down to the Esquire Tavern, have a couple of beers, and then get back in line to get in. And so while I'm in line, I'm watching the game on my phone. So like you, you think you may have jinxed it because you ordered the pizza at the wrong location. I'm standing in line seeing that we're not doing what you could. And, I, and I'm like, I don't have an Alabama shirt on. <laughs> this must be the reason why i don't know but you know we have these routines like you said and i don't think they really mean anything but i guess to us they make us feel better you're right they don't mean squat but you're right it's something that it, just like next week i'll get a brand i'll get a new t-shirt i won't get it last week your mom picked it out so she ain't gonna do that again i'll pick my own alabama shirt and I wear that shirt. I, when the game's over, I take it off. I hang it outside, let it air a little bit. I got to put it up until next week. I, I just a couple of little things like I, I don't know. I just, then last week was Tennessee Hate Week. So in November the 5th, I got to follow up with my, with my back doctor. And guess who I got to see? Nurse Tennessee. Oh, Boy, and she go And she's going to rub it in and stuff like that. So. But anyway, hey, you know what? They got to get their mileage in. Let let them have it. it it's fine because I real her. She reels me, and she doesn't take it too far. It's just just a little bit, you know. Just let you know, 
I'm Tennessee, and we beat you this year, and we'll see what happens next year, right? Uh, yeah. You got to let them have it. You know, if, if this is the second time in 17 years that they've beaten us, then you know what? Let them have their day. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, in that Georgia game last night, I'm going to tell you, I lost all respect I had for Texas last night in that ball game. Why? Because we did the exact same thing to Georgia. And not, in the exact same way that our game with, with Georgia was the exact same way Georgia hit Texas. Because Texas came back in that nothing, second half. Nothing to do with the way the game was played. Had to do with those students throwing all those beer cans out. And then the refs changed. In my mind, the only reason they changed the call to go the other way is because the, the fans throwing um, those kids throwing all the beer cans out. I mean, that whole end zone was covered with trash. And it took them, it didn't take them very long because a whole bunch, I think some band members came out, but, you know, they cleaned it up. It was pretty, everybody. Pretty. It was the band. It was the cheerleaders. What are the, what are the guys and the girls that do the, the yelling and, and whatnot? Not the cheerleaders with the pom-poms. Oh, but the these guys team. Have, yeah, the L team. They, all of those people went over there to help pick it up. Plus, I think some of his staff ran out there because, <laughs> as you saw, he went over to the student section, he being uh, Sarkeesian, and was like, you know, stop, stop. Yeah, right. Um, because he found that refs could have penalized the team. Oh, they didn't. No, but they could have. They could have given them a sports, um, a, a conduct, like conduct. Unsportsmanlike right. conduct, yeah. And, and the call, I thought it was a, but it, it, the call can go either way. But for them I, to go I back didn't out. Agree. I didn't agree with um, the penalty. I thought, thought it was defensive pass interference because the def the defense the the receiver was running towards the defender. The defender he was stopped, but and he put his hands out and pushed into the uh, receiver, who then the receiver pushed back. I thought the defense was blocking him, but you know I don't know enough about those rules because they make these slight changes each year. Yeah, yeah, they would throw stuff on the field, and I I get. You know, at first, there's only a couple of, well, I get that. There's frustration, and you always have one or two idiots. So, like, then all of a sudden, everything came. And then they looked at it. How many times do you see an official reverse a call on a penalty? Never. Especially, Never. On, a, on, especially on a penalty that is not under review. Exactly. And that call, they don't review that call is what I mean. Yeah. yeah and on unreviewable call, I've never seen them ever in the history of NFL or college reverse a call. Yeah, and and for that reason alone, I just I, I just lost the respect for the even the player. commentators were like, I've never seen this before ever. So, even Herb Street was like, Did the students throwing the garbage onto the field cause them to continue the discussions? I think it, it, it did. It it seemed pretty shady to me. Yeah. So anyway. Maybe the refs had money on the game. Oh, we're, yeah, yeah. Hey, we laugh. We're at, we're in Texas, boy. They got a lot of money. How much did they offer Nick Saban uh, eighteen years ago to come over there? A oh, lot of money. That, it wasn't eighteen years ago, but it was probably about maybe maybe ten. It was probably ten years yeah. ago. So anyway, this this good and and stuff like that. So let's talk about some of these annoyances. A noise is an unpleasant mental state that's characterized by irritation and distraction. So that's what that was last night, irritation and distraction. For one's conscious thinking, it can lead to emotions such as frustration and anger. The property of being easily annoyed is called irritability. So you get irritable with me, it's not like your mom, because I don't speak very well because I got this Alabama accent. She said, I didn't learn flying, but... We had fines just like everybody else did, so it was just taught different. That's all. But anyway, and one of the things that, that struck out with mine, remember the uh, Branch Davidian? I do. Psychological warfare. The FBI played music specifically selected for its irritation ability on the last week and, you know, during the Branch Division in an attempt to bring about the surrender of David Koresh and his followers. Didn't work too well, did it? No, it did. So I guess it has to be. If it doesn't irritate you, 
they did the same thing, not the FBI, but uh, the the army did um, against uh, Noriega when we invaded uh, Panama. Yes. When he was at his compound or whatever, they the psyops just played a bunch of loud heavy metal nonstop for like three days or whatever. He he probably had a little bit of you in there. He's probably in there. Yeah, like uh, not him, but it was his, his other guys and stuff like that. So anyway, some of the, some of the things that they the about fifteen things here. One of them was loud chewing. That irritates me. Well, it irritates your mom to know we had somebody chewing gum or, or when you're eating and stuff like that. Uh, traffic jams, I know this one irritates you in the center of the Sitting bumper to bumper in traffic. I can, I can handle traffic. What I can't handle are cars that just poke along and leave a 30-foot gap in between the two cars, and then everybody else cuts in front of it. And guess what? You just get further and further back down the line. Yeah. Well, that's what pisses me off. It, yeah, it does. And I learned a real valuable lesson yesterday. I was at the intersection coming home at, at Calabria and Les Harrison. Just, I was a third car back. Well, the truck in front of me pulled out, went on down, and made a U turn or something like that. So this car in front of me was just really slow. I mean, the light, we went through two changes of the lights there before she. She finally left. But then she pulled into the Circle K, or not Circle, or the whatever that is, gas station is, not Circle K. But anyway, but there's a little old lady with gray hair. She looked older than me. I said, oh, man, well, I'm getting mad at somebody. Then she, she just being careful and so Sometimes you just need to be mindful of other people and stuff like that. But slow walkers, I know. Sometimes when we go places, I get a little bit slow. And I'll get kind of slow walkers, but sometimes we need to be mindful of who some of those slow walkers are, right? No marketing calls, do they bother you? No, I just don't answer them. Yeah, me too, same right here. But people who don't use turn signals, that's a, that irritates me, uh, probably more so than anything else. How hard is it to turn your turn signal or let somebody know you're going to turn or whatever, or change in lane? Mm -hmm makes me irritated more so than that is I'll have my turn signal on wanting to, you know, get over. And the car that is on my right side that is stopping me, they can't gauge or see my turn signal. So as soon as I speed up, they speed up. And if I try to slow down, they back. And next thing you know, I'm, I finally am able to, to either get in front or behind them. And then guess what happens? They put their turn signal on and get over into the lane that I was just in. And I just want to strangle that person. Because turn signals, it doesn't give you the right. But it does signal your intent to everyone around you what you want it's, to do. It's like, I want to it, get over. It's a request. You know, when you, okay, I'll let you do that. I'll, I don't have a problem slowing down, letting you get over and do those kind of things. Not either. I do not either. Yeah. One of the other was uh, loud phone conversations. It depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes it kind of annoys me, but not not a whole lot. But um, automated phone calls when I'm trying to call, just like yesterday with that pizza. It's, so from now on, when I order, I'm going to call the restaurant directly, speak to a person, and then so that that's way more I know. complicated. That's more complicated because now you got to wait. Because as soon as you call, they're like, "Please hold," and then they just put you on hold. It's like, no, I don't want to hold. So don't say "please hold" or "do you, can I?" Can, oh, they say, "Can I put you on hold?" And before you can even speak, you're on hold. No, you know, it's like when I got over to Calabria to pick up the pizza. It's on the right hand side on uh, on Calabria. So. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, so traffic both ways is just bumper to bumper. So for me to come back home, that means I got to sit there in line, cut across traffic to try to go left. Or mm -hmm. I could go to the parking lot, think, well, I'll just go to the traffic light and then you know, turn left and come back down Claybrook. Well, guess what? That lane to turn left off onto uh, Calabria from uh, 1560 is back there. So I back 
I just made a right turn. I drive 5.2 miles to get to the house, try to avoid all that traffic. Now, those those are, in, are, are noises that, and I can see where people get frustrated and get angry and, and stuff like that out of there. So, but anyway, I, I thought that so, was pretty interesting. Last night on my way home from the concert coming down downtown, they're they're doing a lot of construction on a lot of the roads. And on the road that I was headed to uh, the highway on, the far right lane at this one light, there it was shut off. So you could go up into the lane, but by the time you got to the intersection, it was coned off. It, the, the lane ended for construction. But that didn't stop everybody that was from behind me from jumping into that third lane, driving all the way up to the front, putting their turn signal on. And guess what? Those cars in front of me, they're like, oh, come on in, come on in. And guess what? I'm still stuck at the light because you want to let everybody in. And then guess what? The light changes and then you can't go. And yeah. you've made everybody else behind us stuck behind the light. Yeah. That's a pet peeve and a, more than an annoyance. I don't. If you can see up ahead that that lane is shut off, I will sooner die before I let you in. You could take that to the grave. I will keep. I will make everybody wait just to not let you in uh, because it's you're, called courtesy. Because you're cheating and screwing everybody else up, and then there's all these other people. You get into these groups and comments, and they're like. Just let them in. What's it going to do? And I'm like, what it does is you keep rewarding bad behavior. It's like feeding and, your dog we, at the table. And then all of a sudden you get mad one day and you don't want to feed them. Well, guess what? You created the behavior by feeding the dog at the table. So don't exactly. let these people in that are cheating the system. And eventually they'll learn. I have, I have a one one car rule. If I, like I, if I'm stopped at the intersection and somebody's coming from that, side okay i'll let one because if you let more than that you're backing up everybody else behind you and you're slowing right. down the whole process right. yeah, because those people on the right who are trying to come in they could have went down to an intersection and made the turn and got in line just like everybody else two, two other things now, this one is not returning to a shopping cart that really irritates the crap out of me how hard is it take your stuff put your groceries in there's a little thing over right probably right across the the street or whatever not street but you know the the lane like mm -hmm. you just walk put it put it away but they'll leave it and then it bounces out into the traffic and, and stuff or like that. Or how many times have you pulled into a parking spot and now all of a sudden you have to stop because there's a shopping cart in the in the parking space. That, that they were too the lazy to move. Is, the other one is parking across two spaces. How hard is it to park mm. once. I, I need to carry some chalk in my truck and draw a line around, you know, you know, and, and, and then leave a note like special parking, you know, because you're you're that guy or that gal that you just have to take up those two spots. Yeah. And the other one, people who park in the wrong, you know, you're going this way down lane. So why are you going to back into a parking space? It's going to pull out in the opposite direction. Or they'll they'll pull across. I don't, and I, don't I, I don't understand that. But you know what? People can be stupid. I don't know. Maybe they have their reasons for it. Yeah, they're in a hurry and don't care. And the other one that really is, is step in dog. Yeah, that, that, uh, that'll get just about anybody angry, I think. Yeah, you have a pet, and uh, most of us have all had pets and stuff like that. If you're going out, let them run around, take a little bag, pick it up, and throw it in the trash can. Yeah, I see it on these um, neighborhood groups, everybody complaining about their dog or somebody else's dog pooping in their yard or whatever. I get it. You know, if, if you have a dog and you take it for a walk and you know that the dog does it or could do it, you should bring a bag. Yeah. Well, you know, dogs are animals are just like people. You eat, you drink. What goes in has got to come out sooner or later. Sooner or yeah. later. Uh, so, anyway, I, I thought that was kind of interesting and kind of fall in line with what we're talking about with pet peeves and kind of funny, too. Yeah. So what did you call those things? Annoyances? Annoyances, yes. Annoyances. I think that's what no, I'm going to call. I'm going to call the episode Annoyances and Pet Peeves. Continued. Uh -huh. 
So you had three concerts this week. So how'd they go? It it's starting to take its toll on me physically because I tell you what, well, by Wednesday I was I was tired and wore out. Because believe it or not, the latest Brenda and I get home are concerts when we go to floors because they start so stinking late, like nine or nine thirty. Right. And then you got and the then, traffic. And then you got and all that traffic all the way home. Yeah. That, I, that was even your mom enjoyed that Clint Black. That was uh, a good concert, I thought. Uh, he started off, in my opinion, kind of slow, like the first couple of songs. Right. Either the the tempo of the music was slow, or maybe he was like a half a beat behind the music. I don't know. But after like that third song, all of a sudden, everything was like, boom. And then he became yeah. alive and animated. And he's not a much of a talker. He's just about this much more than George Strait when it comes to entertaining the audience. Right. And who was but the he, girl that opened uh, the opening act? What, do you remember her name? Um, I do, but I don't. Um. I can look real. Just give me a, a quick minute. I'm I was really impressed up. with her. I was impressed with her. I thought she had a really great voice. Uh, I don't know how long she's been performing, but uh, she put a little bit into the acting. You know, instead of just standing there like and just singing, you know. Emily I Ann Rob Emily like Ann Robinson. Was, uh, did Brenda get her CD or did she get a Clint Black CD? No, we got her CD. I'm about to look it up and maybe get one. I I was really impressed with her. I thought she she did a really good job. I really loved her voice. Was she traveling with him? Because she said she'd opened a couple of times for him, right? I think so. They could be on the same label. I don't know how these things usually come together. So how was your other concerts that you went to? You had one, what, Monday night and Tuesday night, right? Yeah, man. So Monday night was Knock Loose and two or three other bands that opened up that I was just like, nah. I, I, this, the second to the last and the first, I was like, I don't even know how these guys got on the bill because their music was nothing like Knock Loose. But you know what? I'm the old guy at those concerts because mo mo most of everybody else at the Knock Loose concert was in their early 20s. They were, it was a young, yeah. young crowd. And then the next night, King Diamond uh, got to do the the meet and greet with him, and then the group of us that had that part of we got to walk with him to to the stage. It was man, he and when you got to meet him, it was a one on one, and you got to ask like one or two questions, and then you got your photo taken with him, and it was so cool because and it was him and and uh, the guitarist that he's been with Eric Larocque for forever, and I asked him because his his music. They have um, themes, like the whole album is a, a theme. All the songs are interrelated. And he's done a couple of instances where he's done two albums, and they were both interrelated. And I asked him, I said, how do you come up with these intricate and complex storylines? And he's like, oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. And he was telling me that, that they just worked on this new song, and they were going to play it tonight for the first time. And they recorded a video of it at some abandoned um, psych psychiatric hospital on the East Coast somewhere. And he said he's gotten so much material out of the writing. He said it just keeps coming and coming and coming. He said he's probably got three albums worth of new stuff right now. He oh, said wow. it just it, like it just floods into him. And, and just to get to me, and he's just telling me this based on the question I had. I mean, that was, to me, that was so cool. So cool. Yeah. And it I think that's what when an artist can identify with with their crowd's not the right word with the fans, you know, the fans, the audience. That, I think that's that's what makes him successful. And I think that's kind of what happened with the Clint Black. I think as he got a little bit more into it, the fans, the audience started getting more into it then because you you could hear him singing more. And, you know, the things that fans like to do when they go there. Uh, yeah. They have fun. So, yeah, I thought it was just it was just a great show. The crowd was was crazy. I mean, and it ranged from young to, you know, my age range because, you know, he's he's been around. He started off in a band called Merciful Fate, which probably started in the super late 70s, maybe 1980. And and he left Merciful Fate in like 83, 84 time frame and then started doing his solo stuff. And he's 
done Merciful Fate once or twice, but his music, it's, it's horror related, if you will, you know, and he sings in a high falsetto voice, which has some like kind of operatic themes to it. It's, uh -huh. it's just, it's really cool. I should play you some and just let you want and look at the crazy looks on your face. I, I, I would get a kick out of that. Like that sitting in the airport when you had me sip that, what was that drink you had? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Uh, yeah. So speaking of that, in concerts, I have now gone to 498 concerts that I can remember. I'm two away from 500. Oh, wow. That's a lot of concerts. That's a lot of money. A lot of money, a lot of time. Yeah, but you know what? That's what enjoying life's all about. So and I am. You... I'm, I'm, I'm having so much fun. That's what I told my wife. I said, since I've retired, most people complain about, you know, what have, you know, what have I done with my life? And I kind of felt like that for a long time when I was, you know, in the military. But now that I've retired, my time is my time. And I'm making the most of it. My wife and I are going and doing things. We go out to eat together and enjoy our company. We go on little day trips. I go to my concerts. Um, she's off with her mom and her sister at uh, their, her mom's timeshare this weekend. She'll be spending a couple of days next week as well. So I'm just here with the dogs doing my thing. She's out there doing her thing. And we're we're just having fun. That's, and that's why life's all about. That way, when you get down the road, you get to be my age, you don't have any regrets of what you did or didn't do. Yeah. And you and I are doing side. things fewer and farther between, but the weather's cool. And also there's, and football's on. Well, we're going to start doing some more stuff. There's a yep. there's an off weekend that Bama has coming up, and we need to go do something. Yeah, to be in uh, what two weeks because we've got Missouri next, and then I think the next weekend we is got an off. Missouri, then we got a week off. Then we got LSU, Mercer, Oklahoma, and then Auburn. Shoot, at this yeah, point, I don't think we can beat. I don't think we could beat Auburn this year. I do. I I tell you what, I was impressed what we did. I think we're learning, and we we sometimes forget that. Here's Coach DeBoer and here's Coach Saban. They're just two completely different people. And what DeBoer inherited was this guy's behavior and stuff. So it's about him changing mindsets and and how you do things. So I, I think we'll I, I think we can be the only one that that to me I think we're gonna have a problem with is gonna be LSU. I think that game I, I I think Missouri, I think if we play we can beat them. Mercer, I think we can beat Oklahoma, and I think we can beat Auburn. LSU yeah. is, good, is going to be a, be a challenge. Um, I read an article last night, and it was the exact same thing that I've told you and I've told my wife. Nobody fears Alabama anymore. Right. And what was I going to say? So last night, it wasn't so much the defense as much as it was the offense this time. The defense kind of stepped it up this time. Yep, against a very, very, very good Tennessee. I was impressed. Yep. We held them to, what, 15 points? For... Yep. So, but then, you know, Sierra Carolina won last night. Vanderbilt won last night. Vanderbilt won. Yeah, in the third quarter, we yep. they were, they'd only scored 14 points in the third quarter. 14. So, yep. In three quarters, we held them scoreless in the first half. Yep. So, and then they only uh, put up, well, then they put up 10 in the fourth. But you know what I'm saying? So the defense showed up, but we only scored seven in the second, three in the third, and seven in the fourth. That's offense. That's not defense. No. I, and there was an article today. I didn't read it yet. And that, that was alluding to that point, too. But, you know, so anyway, that's the way it is. And that's what we're going to learn. And I still love my Crimson Tide. And just Go forward and enjoy the rest of the season, and I'm going to get a brand new shirt this weekend. Oh. You know, I I think that feeling that we're all feeling as Alabama fans is probably what everybody else feels normally. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. Well, we're almost at 40 minutes here. We got it. Yeah. Well, we talked about a lot. Yeah. So well, Don't step in more, any more dog poo-poo. I won't. All right, everybody. Y'all take care. Have a good week. We love you. All right. Yeah, we yeah, we love you guys. Have a good week. Y'all take care. Bye.